Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach a play through Hexagon. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Hexagon. Hexagon is a puzzle game of rolling dice and connecting colors together so that you can collect them off the board. It was designed by Professor Puzzle Games and I saw this for sale not too long ago and I thought, you know what, that looks cool, I might as well pick it up. So let's go into setup here. And so you have these two dice, which is just set aside for now. And then you're gonna arrange these hexagons. These gotta be all kind of mixed up, but none of the same color can be next to each other. And you just kind of arrange them in a, a hex shape or whatever shape that ends up being. And so now I've arranged them in this kind of uh, rectangle pattern here, but you don't have to have that pattern. It could be almost a circle or a, a hexagon. However, it turns out it could be any kind of weird pattern. But as you can see, none of these have any of their same color next to them. And so we're ready to get started. So the goal of hexagon is to eliminate as many of the hexagons as possible. And the way you eliminate in hexagon is where you match up three of the same color next to each other. So in this case here, if I were able to swap this pink one and this blue one into the space here, then I would have three of a kind here and I could take those off the board and they would get removed from play immediately. You're able to match uh, two colors at the same time. So if a rotation does that, then uh, you will gain both those colors. And so the way the turn works is you just take the dice, you're gonna roll them, and then you're gonna choose one of the two colors shown here, and then you'll swap that color with the, an adjacent tile. So in this case here with the yellow, I could swap this yellow with this green here, or I could swap it with the blue, or the black, or the green here, the white, or the orange. So you choose one of those sets, and then you pick them up like so, and then you're gonna take them, turn them around, and put them back in their position. Now you do need a way to track your turns and the game just says to write it down how many times you go because you only get to roll the dice 15 times. And so the way I track them is I use these uh, beads here that I use for other games. And so I have 15 beads here and uh, basically I will pull one down and that'll indicate that I've rolled once. Now there's a couple situations that you need to know about. If you ever roll doubles, let's say I rolled two blacks here, then I could take one of those black hexes and swap it with any other hex tile that's on the block here. Also, if at some point the block gets split, as in there's a full gap between one block and another, you'll figure out which one is the main block, it's the one that has more hexes, and then you, one hex at a time, you'll move all the hexes from the other separated block to connect to the new block. Now they do have to follow a set of rules where you can't put a hex next to another of the same color. So if you are unable to do that for whatever reason, the game will end there. Otherwise the game will go on for 15 rounds and then at the end of the 15th round, you will score and you'll count however many remaining hexes are in the grid and that's your score for the game. You wanna have the least amount as possible and zero is the ultimate champion if you can accomplish that. All right, so we're ready to get, begin. So I'm gonna place one token down here to indicate that I'm rolling dice. And we have a yellow and a green. So I can swap either a green with something or a yellow with something that's adjacent to it. I think what I wanna do is swap these two here. Now I didn't have to choose both colors as a swap. I just needed to choose one. But in this case here, I think this is a good swap. It gets the greens closer to each other and then these three yellows closer to each other. And so we'll roll again. Number round number two and we have pink and blue and so in this case here I will swap these two <laughs> again I didn't have to choose both colors but it just happened to be that's the way it worked but now I have three blues and so these three here get removed from the board and so our next turn here we have a green and an orange I do want to move this green closer to here but I also want to move this orange closer to here so I think I will move this one, this orange here. I will choose the orange as the moving color and we'll swap these two here. And we're rolling again. Got a yellow and a pink right now. I will take this yellow here and swap it with the black. I think that is the best way because now I've completed the yellows here and these will get removed from the board. Now I have to tell you, I'm not very good at this game. I think my best score so far has been nine. I, and it's uh, the rank is amateur if, <laughs> if you get a nine. 
And so we roll again here. Got a green and a blue. I like the idea of moving these two, except that's gonna put the blue further away from this blue here. And I kinda wanna work my way from the outer edge. So I think I will swap this green and this black. I think that's the right call. That'll get the black somewhat more in line with these black ones up here. And uh, this green one moves down a little. All right, moving on to the next turn here. We've got a pink and an orange. I'll definitely choose the orange because then I can swap it with this yellow here. And that's gonna match up three orange right now. It also matched up two yellow for later. So that'll help remove those yellows later. Next turn, let's see. All right, with the green and the orange, I think the best thing for me to do is swap these two. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to work towards splitting this block because then I can uh, kind of rearrange things better a little later. So now we remove all of these yellows here and it's our next turn, yellow and orange. Now there is no yellow, so I do have to use the orange. This is not a very good situation here. I know I could swap this orange here with this green and get rid of those greens. It won't break up that block. So I, I don't think I wanna do that. So I'm gonna swap this orange here with the black. I don't know. <laughs> I think I've got myself in a bind here. The turns are ticking down and it's not uh, working in my favor, but we'll try and keep going here. So now we have a pink and a black. And so I will definitely use the black down here and I'm gonna swap it with this white and that's gonna eliminate both of these. And then we're gonna have an issue where we have multiple separations from the block. So we have to move all the hexes on the board and it's following standard set of rules where it has to match two sides and I can't leave any like single gaps where there's one in the middle that's empty. And uh, of course they can't touch one that's the same color. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this one I think over here, we'll start with that one. And then this green one, I think I'll put over here. It's touching two sides there. This orange one, I wanna bring up here. This pink one here, I think will go here. This white one over here. And this blue one, I guess, will go here. Yeah, I think that's the best bet. But I'm hoping is I'll roll doubles later where I can swap these two here. And that's kind of a slim chance, but I'm gonna hope for it anyways. And so we have one more turn going here. We have a blue and a yellow. Now we don't have any yellow, so all we can do is blue. And so what I think I should do is swap these two here. That'll get the blues together and the pinks together. Hopefully that works in my favor. And our next turn here. All right, so we have a green and a blue. I think the only thing I should consider right now is this one here, swapping the orange and the green, just like that. And then that means I get to pick up these greens here. It didn't separate that block, but we're pretty close to it. All right, next turn here, yellow and pink. Well, I think I will swap both of these here, the yellow or the pink and the orange, and that's gonna get rid of both the orange and then the pinks here. That was a nice move. But now we have a complete separation again, and this, this might end the game. We'll see how it goes. And so we have to separate these here and, and bring them back to this one. And, and of course, nothing can touch. So we have to be very careful about this here. So we place this green one here, this white one here, another white one here, and a black one here, and then a pink one here, a black one over here. No, we'll put it right here. And then a white one right here and a black one here. Actually, we'll put the pink one right there. And then this last white one, I guess we'll put it right here. All right, so we have three turns left. Let's see if I can get a better score here. We got green and yellow. The only swap I can really do with green is this one here if I want, or I can bring the white closer to each other. I don't think that's worth it. I think at this point we swap this around. That way we can take the greens and once again, we're gonna have a block separation and it just gets harder to place these. So we'll put the blue here and then the white, I guess will go here. All right, two turns left. Now, since neither of these colors are in the, in the block here, we get to roll again and let's see what we get. Ooh, double blues. Ooh, 
So what that means is I can swap a blue with any other color on the board. And so if I take this blue here and swap it with the black, then I will not only complete the blues, but I'll complete the black as well. So I think that's what we're gonna do, just like that. And so I complete the blue and I complete the black. And now we're down to this last final board. And I don't think there's any way to place these. <laughs> so yeah, at this point, because we can't place these legally, no matter where I place this touching two, it's gonna touch another pink. And the same with the white here is gonna touch the white here or here. So at this point, the game ends. I don't get my final turn. However, I got a score of six this time. So we check out the guide here and that gives me a master rating. Hey, how about that? I'm a master. And so there you go. That was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Hexagon by Professor Puzzle Games. Now I haven't bought any other Professor Puzzle Games, but this game makes me want to buy more and check out more. If you have bought some of those games, let me know which ones are good. I'd, I'd like to seek out some more. But also let me know what you think of this game. Point out any rules errors I may have made. And then please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And I thank everyone who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.